How are the, how are the animal steel is no longer with us, which actually, um, before we tell you about today's episode, uh, Aaron, you sent me something on, uh, on the internet. No, don't show ago. anybody that. What? Uh, what? No, wait. Huh? I'm sorry. You sent me something. No, not that. No, not those. No, I, you sent me something else on the internet a couple of days ago and I figured I've was... been working out. I wanted to show them my progress. So. Okay. Well, you look great. You look jack chiseled, ripped, cut up, but I think it's important since we've been talking about him so much over the past couple of weeks, Howard animal steel, we've alluded to the legend that is one animal steel. And we've also mentioned how he had passed on. And I didn't actually remember how long ago it was. You through some research, actually found his obituary. (laughs) Look, I've never done research for (laughs) any of the shows that I've ever uh, commentated for. No Prime Wrestling, no PWO, no AIW, no uh, Featherweight Wrestling or whatever Joe Dombrowski runs right now. But any of those shows, never did research. You got me researching here. (laughs) You have uh, sparked something inside of me. And I've been looking up things from the past. I've been digging up old skeletons. Yeah. So you you found the obituary of Howard Animal Steel, and uh, he actually passed away on June twenty fifth, two thousand seven. And uh, I don't know if you know the significance of that, but he actually passed the day after Chris Benoit died. What? <laughs> So, so he really, wow. so, so Animal Steel was trying to, in a way, I feel like, take away from the passing of one Chris Benoit. Well, <laughs> I, why are you laughing? I'm at not me? sure that that's something that he, I well, that, maybe, I don't know. I, I mean, don't know. yeah. Uh, so awkward, God, right? God bless the animal. A little awkward. So, uh, real name, Howard Meisel, 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 Howard Meisel. He was born in Detroit. On April 21st, 1945, Meisel worked for the Lorraine County Sheriff and City of Lorraine P- Police Fraternal Order of Police for over 20 years, which you alluded to. He was a professional wrestler for 36 years. 36 fucking years. That means, like, there has to be some Howard Animal Steel content on the YouTube, or we should be able to get something on the YouTube. And I'm definitely going to get sued for having Razor Ramon's theme playing in the background right now. That's not Razor's theme. That's the uh, ringtone. No, no, no. That's uh, the Eagles, uh, those shoes. Okay. All right. So. Anyways, so there's got to be some Howard Animal Steel content out there on the internet. Or if someone has some, please send it over to Aaron and I. Uh, he was a professional wrestler for 36 years. And here's here's a key sentence that, that is in this obituary here. He was awarded the International Wrestling Association United States Tag Team Championship on two different occasions. Now, had it only said one, I would have thought to myself, well, maybe he was actually awarded. Maybe it was like a forfeit or someone had to vacate it. But it says on two different occasions, giving me the impression that, like, the, whoever wrote this obituary was just like, yeah, wrestling's fake. Or they just <laughs> gave it to him. Well, I, I when obituaries are written, uh, usually it's someone close to them, that close to the person that passed. True. That yeah, that's the true. Obituary. That's true. Yeah. So, not really sure. So, who so some, wrote someone that. close to him didn't have much faith in his uh, legitimacy as a professional wrestler, or, or as a jewelry salesman. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's. If you didn't hear last week, go back listen to last week's episode where Animal Steel is selling jewelry to ECW superstars. Um, okay, a little bit more about Animal Steel. He enjoyed eating ribs. I remember <laughs> that. I went <laughs> to the rib off with him. <laughs> Why you went yeah. to a rib off with him? Okay, so it's the rib cook-off, but all I kept calling it was the rib-off. Okay. So I didn't know if we were going to, like, eat ribs or if it was, like, a place where, like, you play jokes on each other. What year is this that you went to the rib-off with them? Oh, 97, maybe? 96, 97? How does that come about that Howard Animal Steel asked you if you want to go to the rib cook-off? Because Sabu wanted to go. <laughs> so Sabu was there, too? Yeah. <laughs> so you, Sabu, and Howard Animal Steel are Sabu and his cook-off. wife and their dog... Okay. I uh, traveled via uh, RV. Uh huh. And I don't know if you've ever heard about Sabu's legendary RV, but. I have not. Okay. There was a tanning bed inside. Really? Yeah. Okay. Satellite television. What? Yeah. Big shower, everything. But uh, that's all legit. And uh, Pee Wee used to drive for him. Pee Wee Moore. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ref from ECW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Wow. So, uh, yeah, he drove him down to Cleveland because Cleveland was famous for the, the Cleveland rib burn-off. Yep. And Animal, being the rib lover that he is, suggested to Sabu, come down, talk business, eat ribs, have fun. And so Animal had me make up ECW flyers because ECW had just started um, coming to the Cleveland area, I believe. Okay. And they had no advertisement. I don't know who the promoter was. I'm not sure exactly how it all went. But eventually, I made these flyers. Well, so so, so as an aside, now I know this was the case when, like, Ring of Honor used to come to town in Cleveland and, like, various other cities, like, um, before they had grown to the height that they're at now, they would get, like, a local promoter to promote the show. So in yeah. this case, like, for example, in Cleveland, uh, JT Lightning would promote Ring of Honor locally, and which, like, Ring of Honor notoriously never drew good in Cleveland. And I don't think that was necessarily JT's fault. Like, I think it was just the way the market was back then. But, like, so, like, I remember JT got a lot of heat with ROH because – the tickets weren't selling they were like they were supposed to. And for the longest time, I don't know if they ever did, Ring of Honor stopped coming to Cleveland in like 2007. So was this the case with ECW back in the 90s? Like did they have to um, outsource, I guess, like local promotions to promote for them? Or was this just a special situation with you? Okay, the, the way it was presented to me by Rod Destiny, my trainer, who was the, the had the close ties with Animal Steel, was ECW – would come to town. I believe it was maybe Sabu and Animal working together okay. for the Cleveland shows. And they need advertising done. Nobody knew how to work a computer back then. This was 96. So, like, what, maybe Windows Paint? Okay. <laughs> oh, Does boy. that sound like a thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just MS Paint, yeah. Yes, that's it. MS Paint. That's what it was. So, I would, you know, come up with stuff where it was like a... Uh, the letters, the text of it, and say it was in the winter time. I had like the snow text, or <laughs> you know, and then I would put a barbed wire border around. Yeah. And then what I would do, I would write out whatever the match they told me they wanted on this flyer to look like to, to say. So it would always be like Sabu versus Rob Van Dam in the main event. So I would go to the after mags because I had 287 after mags just sitting in my house. And I would cut out a picture of Sabu and a picture of Van Dam, and I would tape it to the master copy of the flyer. Uh huh. And then I would run copies off. Amazing. And that was yeah. like pretty, that was typical protocol back then to make a flyer, right? I guess because I would think I was the first one that was like for me that knew how to was trying to make flyers. Okay, cool. Well, and with maybe, pictures on them. Because I know, I know CWA back in the day, Cleveland Wrestling Alliance used to have like similar, um, well, I mean, I'm not I'm not seeing your flyers, but I'm considering the time period. Them. Like they were, they were dog shit, I would imagine. Like they probably weren't the best, right? They were impressive for the time. I'll okay. say that. Okay. So they got the point across. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So you're, you're making these flyers. And then all of a sudden I became the regular guy to do that. Okay. So every time they come to Cleveland, and then uh, I remember one time we made them, we made these flyers, they had me make them, and we were going, I was meeting Sabu and Pee Wee uh, and the the RV at Cleveland, maybe the Cleveland Convocation Center? Okay. Wolstein Center or something? Yeah. Nitro was going to be there, or Thunder? Yeah, that's where they used to run CSU, which is now Wolstein. Okay. And I made these flyers. I ran off, you know, 500 copies or whatever and took them into Nitro as I hid them in my pants or something. Okay. Took them in and then split the copies up between me, Sabu, Van Dam, Pee Wee, whoever. Wait, 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 wait. So, so Sabu and RVD are, f- are flying in Nitro? RVD wasn't there, but Sabu was in there. And I don't know that he flyered, but I know he was in the building. Okay. That's uninvited so yeah that's so weird and it I... was right about the time that he ended up remember there was a thing where he had just signed a contract but then was released from he was a there contract at the end of 95 or... yeah so yeah. He, he did one pay-per-view but it was wasn't a real contract so it was uh because he had signed maybe an ecw contract so there was some legal problem yeah i don't i don't remember exactly but i know that i got in trouble for these flyers and they took my tape away the security those sons of bitches right and I had a pack of gum, so I just chewed up 
gum. <laughs> okay. And then I use that to stick on the back of the flyers to put up all over the uh, CSU arena. So carny. Yeah, but yeah. Amazing. But that was my job, man. My job was to make these flyers and put them out and to get ECW's name out there. And I, you know, I just gotten into the business. I wasn't. I don't even know that I had taken my first bump yet at the time. 